In this video, we're going to be doing a deep dive into a handful of some of the best selling and most intriguing digital IR night vision binoculars. And we'll be taking a look at some footage from each device in a few different environments and discussing their ease of use, their size and weights, their build quality, and pros and cons of these devices, and piecing it all together to help give you a good idea of which one is best for you. And we've got a nice price range here from $70 all the way up to $900. So there should be something here for pretty much everybody. The devices we're going to be looking at today are the NVG G1 from Wild Game Plus. And this comes with an adjustable head strap, which makes it possible for you to wear it on your head for total hands-free use. And they're also compatible with GoPro mounts and could be mounted to a helmet with a fast mount as well. So this really sets it apart from the rest of the crowd and presents some really interesting use cases. It's also the best mid-range performer of the bunch, so if you only need to see up to about 200 meters, this device was the best suited for the task. The Night Fox Red also comes with a headband and it can also be worn just like the NVG G1. And it's actually slightly more comfortable. And what sets the Red apart from the crowd is its close range performance. And the Red has an ultra wide field of view. And this is the only one that would be suitable for walking around indoors. But the device is really only useful up to about 60 meters. The Luna Optics LNG3 B50 Pro is going to give you the most range and clarity at distance by a long shot. And it definitely feels like the most sturdy and well built unit in the bunch and did receive the highest overall score in our testing, but it does come at a much higher price tag than the rest of the devices here. The Geoffy M24K is the most budget friendly, coming in at about $70, but it did receive decent ratings on Amazon, and the video quality and range did stack up pretty well, but the power of the IR illuminator was lacking. So with this one, you might consider some supplemental lighting if you're serious about using it, which will definitely increase the cost. Finally, we have the XX Autofocus NVB, which as the name suggests has autofocus. And this is the most versatile device in the lineup. And while zoomed out, you get a nice wide field of view. But when you zoom in, it does give you some great range as well. And it also has a full color digital night vision mode, which is something that none of the other devices have and actually works quite well and makes for some great video footage. I also created a spreadsheet, which makes it a little easier for you to compare the specs and features of these binoculars. And that will also be linked to down in the description in case you want to check Check that out and there's also links which you can use to purchase these items and help support the channel at no additional cost to you and before we dive in be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're new here all the devices we're looking at today have video recording capability which was a requirement for them to be included in the video and the first thing we're going to start with is a quick comparison so you can get an idea of the field of view and the range of these devices and for reference the truck in the parking lot is approximately 50 meters away as you can see the night fox red has an ultra wide field of view and it's going to be well suited for close range and the XX actually comes in relatively close behind. The NVG G1 brings you in a little bit closer and it's followed by the M24K and the Luna Optics is the most narrow, but it's designed for longer range where it truly excels compared to the others. Now we're going to check out some footage of these devices and we'll start with the Wild Game Plus NVG G1. And this one does have a decent field of view coming in right around 22 degrees, which is the second widest in the lineup. And this is well suited for use up to about 200 meters. And the IR illuminators are nice and floody and well powered and probably some of the best here. And it does make it really easy to see the whole soccer field quite well. And the quality of the video is pretty good too. The range without magnification is not bad and you can see stuff in the distance pretty good and the performance is strong in the presence of ambient lighting. With regards to its viability as a head mounted setup, it is going to be useful for outdoor use and definitely has better range compared to the Night Fox Red, which we'll be looking at next. But the field of view is too narrow for it to be useful for walking around indoors for close quarter situations. The NVG G1 does record directly to an SD card, and this one comes with an 8GB card. And the video output of the viewing screen is 240 by 536 OLED, and the video recordings are 1920 by 1080 p This is the Night Fox Red, and this is the widest field of view device in the lineup, coming in around 46 degrees. And while it's good at illuminating things close in front of you, the performance definitely suffers when any kind of range is involved, both in terms of the range of the optics and the range of the illuminator, which does seem underpowered even for close range setups like this one, and the device only has a max range of 60 meters. The range is better in the presence of ambient lighting, and you can start to see things further away, and this is one device where digital magnification comes in handy, and the image quality doesn't suffer too much. However, the range of the setup is much more limited compared to the other binoculars in this comparison. If you do plan to use this device, to walk through the woods or indoors the setup does a very good job at that and this is the only setup here that it would be possible to use for these types of circumstances and it's designed with CQB in mind and airsoft is probably the only application that this is truly suitable for 
The RED has full HD 1920x1080p video output and you will have to purchase your own SD card. The Luna Optics is the champion of the group when it comes to range and it does have a max distance of 600 meters and the quality of the video is very clear and it has a slightly rosy hue to it which is actually quite nice on the eyes and the illuminator is well powered and it has a 10 degree field of view. I noticed eye fatigue start to set in while using many of the other devices but this one was definitely the least jarring and disruptive to my night vision and if you do plan on running your binoculars for hours at a time you're definitely going to benefit from a setup that's less strenuous to look at. If you want to be able to see Clearly at distance, this is definitely the best device in the lineup and probably the only true long range device of all the binoculars here. When it comes to range in the presence of ambient lighting, this device really excels. And from here, you get a great view of the building that's 1500 meters away. But as you zoom in, it maintains much of its clarity better than all the other devices here, which is a very impressive feat. The device that I have that's most comparable to this one is actually monocular. And that one would be the Best Garter WG50 Plus, which is more of a budget end device. And if you want to check out some footage from that one you can check out my night vision monocular comparison video linked to down below another cool feature that's unique to this device is a built-in laser rangefinder which is accurate to 1500 meters which is a very practical feature to have as well there is electronic image stabilization and you can sync this device with your smartphone via wi-fi and it can record 60 frames per second fhd video on its included 16 gigabyte sd card the jalfi m24k does have pretty good video quality and it's on par with the other binoculars in the lineup which is impressive considering how affordable it is in comparison to the other devices, but the IR illuminator is on the weaker end, and this is definitely an area where you're gonna notice this device lagging, so supplemental IR lighting might be something to keep in mind if you plan to use it in pitch dark environments, and I don't think that the range claim of 300 meters is fair under these circumstances. I'm not sure where the 10 times optical and eight times digital ratings come from either, and the magnification is nowhere near these levels, but I am impressed with the range nonetheless. It does do much better in the presence of ambient lighting and I am impressed with the range of this device in those types of environments. You can record 4k video with this device and there is a 32 gigabyte SD card included. Next in the lineups, we have the XX Autofocus NV and this is one of the most versatile and feature rich devices here and the field of view is quite wide when it's zoomed out and is closest to the Night Fox Red, but you can also zoom in optically pretty far and it does do a good job of maintaining the quality of the image. Another interesting feature of this device is it has a built-in autofocus and it does take a few seconds, but most of the time it does do a pretty decent job of bringing the scene into focus, though it's not perfect. And if it's off, you can manually adjust it to wherever you need it. The IR illuminator is on the weaker end, but it is sufficient for mid-range use, even though it does claim 600 meters on the product page, which is wildly high, and there's no way that the IR luminators can keep up that far. And it has a one times optical zoom and up to 16 times digital zoom. It does do well in ambient lighting, and the range is pretty good in this setting, and it is the second best behind Luna Optics, though Luna Optics is really in a different class when it comes to range. One thing that's really interesting this gadget has that none of the others do is a color night vision mode. And I have no idea how this works, but the footage was taken around midnight at right around the same time that the footage from the other devices was taken and it eerily resembles the time right around sunrise, even though it's in the middle of the night. And you can see quite well with this mode, and it's really astonishing how good the color rendering is. And as you can see, the grass looks really green, and the color is so close to what it would look like under sunlight. Video recording resolution is 1920 by 1080, and there is a 32 gigabyte SD card included as well. Now we'll take a few minutes to talk about how easy it is to use the devices, starting with the NVGG1. And the button layout is pretty good, and the UI is simple, and the core feature features like recording, IR adjustment, and zoom are easy to use. So overall the experience is decent, but there's no tripod mount on this device so it's going to be tougher to get stabilized videos. The Night Fox Red is very easy to use as well, and I do prefer the button configuration on this one over the others slightly. And the one thing that's a bit awkward for me is that the focus adjustment is on the bottom instead of on the top, but it's not a huge deal and there's no tripod mount on the setup either. Luna Optics did a great job with their setup, and while the button configuration could be a little easier to manage, it is very easy to zoom with the zoom knob, and it's very responsive, and you can make adjustments to the IR beam angle, the output level, as well as the focus with ease, and there is a tripod mount on the bottom. The M24K is also pretty easy to use, and the button configuration is simple to manage, and the focus is seamless, and there's a tripod mount on this device too. There's a lot of buttons on top of the XX and VB, but the layout is good and this is one of the easiest 
easiest ones to access the basic features of the device. And the autofocus is great, and it does take a few seconds, but usually it's pretty receptive, and this does help to make the device much easier to use. And there's also a tripod mount on this one too. Now we've got all the monoculars lined up by size and weight, and the M24K is a step ahead of the rest when it comes to size and portability. And as you can see, it's much smaller and more lightweight compared to the rest of the binoculars. The NVG G1 and the Night Fox Red are pretty much the same size, and the Luna Optics and the Ixies are both larger and bulkier, with the Luna Optics coming in just shy of a kilo. With regards to build quality, Luna Optics is definitely a cut above the rest, and the body feels very sturdy, the buttons are super responsive, and the quality of the glass is also super high. The Night Fox Red and the NVG G1 are in a similar class with regards to build quality, with the very slight upper hand going to the red because of how much better the setup is connected to the head mount, and the X-X does come in close behind those. Unfortunately, the build quality is lacking the most on the M24K, and it does feel somewhat fragile compared to the rest of the binoculars, and the buttons feel a little bit flimsy, and this is definitely where the compromise comes in on price. The charging setups and the battery types of these devices are pretty straightforward. The NVG G1 runs a pair of 16340 batteries, and it does have an onboard USB-C port for charging. The Night Fox Red has an 18650 battery, but the battery compartment is sealed with a screw, so removing it isn't all that convenient but it does have a micro USB port for charging. Luna Optics runs four CR123As, and the ones it comes with are not rechargeable, but it does have a USB-C port, which you can use to power the device as well. The Geoffy M24K has a built-in 2000 mAh battery and also charges via USB-C. And finally, the XX NVB has a really large 8000 mAh capacity battery, with a USB-C port for charging. I put all the performance and specs data together and gave each one a score out of 100 and plotted them on this chart so you can get a better idea of their true value. I gave them a score out of 30 on their video quality which factored in the clarity of the video, a range score out of 20 based on their effective usable distances, an ease of use score out of 10 based on how easy it is to use the device and manipulate the UI in the field, a score out of 20 on their size and weight, and a score out of 20 on their build quality. And I totaled them all up and gave them a final score out of 100. And on the X axis, you'll see how they scored. And on the Y axis, you can see their price. The Luna Optics binocular was the highest scoring with a total score of 74 points and it pretty much beat out all of the devices in every category with the exception of size and weight, which was a category that it did lose the most points on. But aside from being less portable, it's definitely the best option if being able to see and identify things at longer distances is your priority. Next up, we have the NVG G1 and the Ixix AF NVB, which tied for points with a score of 66. The NVG G1 was above average in most categories with the exception of range, which is where it suffered the most, but it did do pretty well in the size and weight category and the video quality category as well. And if you want a nice mid-range setup, you can wear on your head. This one is one of the most appealing on the market. The Ixix does outperform the NVG G1 in almost every category, but the big points deductions were due to its size and weight. So that's the biggest factor to consider when you're deciding between the two. It is almost comparable with the Luna Optics binoculars and considering it's about a quarter of the price, it does do pretty well, but you do sacrifice a few hundred meters in range. The Geoffy M24K came in a few points behind with 62, which really isn't bad considering the price of $70. And its main deductions came from the build quality and the video quality mainly due to a weak IR illuminator. So if you aren't gonna be too rough on it and you don't need to see that far, this one might get the job done for you. Finally, we have the Night Fox Red, which brought up the rear with 56 points. And overall it did perform average in most categories with the exception of range which is pretty poor compared to the other devices. However, if you are looking for a close range setup, this would be more of a pro than a con. And under these circumstances, the red would score significantly higher. And I was amazed at how well I could use it to navigate indoors. Thanks so much for watching the video. And if you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below and let me know which night vision binocular is your favorite. And if you want to pick any of these up and help support the channel, you can find links down in the description.